Eternals, um, Adventurous new instalment in uh, Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic uh, Universe. So uh, the story basically is that a bunch of kind of godlike figures have been down on Earth dealing with deviants, who are big monstery beasties, and they've, they've dealt with the deviants, and then now they, they're staying around, but they've all kind of moved into uh, incognito life. So they are still on Earth. They're not quite sure why, but they know that the deviants might come out. So they've, But they've been on Earth. They're not meant to interfere with human events, although mm. they kind of do yes. in a way like a sort of personified version of the monolith from 2001. Anyway, the cast includes Angelina Jolie, Gemma Chan, Salma Hayek, Barry Keoghan, uh, Kamal Nanjiani. Here is a scene in which, because they're now, as I said, living apparently civilian lives, in which Kamal Nanjiani is a Bollywood star, but stuff is starting to happen, so the gang have to get back together again. Got it? No. Okay, here we go. Okay, everyone, that was good. I think we can do 10% better. That was beautiful. Very, very good. Ah! <laughs> My friends from college are here. Oh, boss! Perfect timing. Welcome to the set of Shandar Dastane Icarus. I'm playing you. You like the costume? We need to talk. Tell the director I have some notes for him. We need to talk to you in private. Oh, Karan, he's worked with me for 50 years. I trust him completely. Actually, when we first met, he thought I was a vampire, and he tried to stake me through the heart. I have apologized so many times. Not quite enough times. Very close, though. I'll let you know. Oh, I have to get ready for the next scene. Come to my tent. We'll talk there. You, can't. you guys are going to love the next scene. I come in on a wire, because, you know, I can't fly. Wait, are we getting back together? We need to talk. The deviants are back. We don't know how many there are. You need to come with us. So, hmm. Directed and co-written by Chloe Zhao, who made Nomadland and uh, The Rider and is a brilliant filmmaker, an Oscar winner recently, only the second uh, woman to win uh, Best uh, Director after Catherine Bigelow for Hurt Locker. An impressively diverse cast of characters, including Makari, who is a deaf character played by uh, Lauren Ridloff, who is deaf, gay characters who proudly uh, kiss on screen in a way that is kind of still fairly new in uh, Marvel movies, rainbow coalition of cultural heritages, completely rethought from the original uh, strip uh, incarnations to make it super inclusive and to make it something which is, you know, which really is pushing the boundaries and doing something interesting, full of things that you want to cheer for. The fact that a filmmaker like this is making this film, the fact that a film this big has a cast with this kind of diversity in it, the the fact that it's a film which has got really interesting actors like Barry Keegan, who I think is, you know, is always fascinating on screen because he has that thing about sympathetic but scary and mercurial and all those things. Sadly, despite all those points, it's a mess. And however much it appears to be stretching the envelope in terms of everything that I've just said, it feels absolutely production line in a way which is really, really weird. I mean, what's that phrase, you know, plus ça change, you know, the more things change, the more things stay the same. There's a very strange experience watching Eternals thinking, this is doing so many things that appear to be new and path-breaking, and yet it feels completely old-fashioned and mechanical. From the pedestrian plotting, with this plot that kind of tracks this dreary path between, you know, continents and time periods, to the sort of the pantomime design and the huffing and puffing of the special effects sequences. And the special effects sequences are special effects sequences which are full of special effects that don't feel like they're in any way different to any other special effects sequences. The plot about, you know, thing about they're down on Earth because they have to deal with the deviants feels like something that was left over from Transformers. Effects are just effects. You get these very, you know, high-profile stars doing their best to mix intimacy, comedy, you know, impending apocalypse, but the efforts barely register because of the mechanical clanging of the narrative that just doesn't know what to do with all its moving pieces. I thought two things. The first thing I thought was if you'd, if perhaps the movie had concentrated on one or two of these characters maybe that would be something because one of the problems is that there are too many characters, too many threads, too many plot points going on for it to be engaging. The second thing is, you know, we often get this thing when 
somebody will write in and they'll complain that such and such a movie, this happened in the case of Bond, somebody wrote in and said that the most recent Bond movie was ruined by it being right on and it having blue-haired feminists in it. And we're saying, what on earth? It, you know, you can object to the movie for whatever reason, but objecting to it because it's, you know, because it's what you think of as, in inverted commas, woke is nonsensical. This is kind of proof that a movie can do all the things that that we would get accused of going soft on a movie for because it is you know it's diverse and inclusive and adventurous and Chloe Zhao and all those things should be great but it isn't and the reason it isn't great isn't because of all those things it's not like it's not a great film because it's woke are you afraid that people might no no yes yes yeah, yeah, so I want to be absolutely clear those things are not problems those things are actually the thing about the film that's interesting and good everything else is the problem and it just it i want to be very clear that the problem with the film is that the film is mechanical and dull and boring it's not mechanical and dull and boring because it's a film that's trying to be inclusive or forward looking that's a plus point that's a point of entry that's an interesting thing to be doing but it just feels like are we not all tired of this universe now have we i mean i I know that it's a really old man thing to say, enough, you wiped out half the world or half the universe, you know, however many movies ago it is. I just don't know that, I don't know that I can get emotionally invested anymore. And I certainly can't get emotionally invested when there are umpty thrumpty characters with umpty thrumpty locations and bits and stuff and all the thing. And then it's just a series of special effects sequences interspersed by some nice little dialogue moments and some moments of humour with some, you know, good characterization. That bit that we played just then is quite funny. And me thinking, if you'd made this whole film about Barry Keoghan, for example, if you'd made this whole film about uh, Come On Johnny, maybe that would have been a way in. But it, it gives me no pleasure at all to say it's boring and it doesn't work.